Good evening, uh, good evening, Michael. That's um, that's encouraging to have to join you. Thank you very much for for the invitation to come along today. As Ian said, I'm Dermot O'Bruder. I'm the principal of Gael College Jibera, which is the most recently uh, opened Irish medium school uh, here in the north, and uh, it's situated in Dungiven, uh, County Derry. Um, we opened our doors last year with 16 pupils, and you might have read about us in the news. Uh, but since then, we also had our second intake in September this year of 32 pupils. So we now have 48 pupils attending the school. But I'll talk a wee bit about Gail College de Gura after a few moments. But the brief I was given uh, by uh, Kiva when she asked me to come along and speak today was to give a, a bit of a, an insight into Irish medium education in general from my own perspective and from the perspective of my school. So a little bit about myself. Um, I, I was, um, uh, I suppose, brought up in the Irish um, language community on the Shaws Road in West Belfast. That's a, a group of houses. We have, there's about 25 houses now. But when I was growing up, there was 11 houses. It was on the edge of West Belfast, and our parents had sort of met at Irish language activities. In fact, that big fella down there in, in the third row from the back and his wife is, is, uh, is my mum and dad. And, uh, and they... <laughs> Put the spotlight, on, Put the spotlight on, on the big fella. Uh, but but he was, uh, they met in, uh, I suppose, 1966 in Patrick's Night, Cayley and Common Clonard. And uh, somebody said to my mum, come on to the Cayley, there's a big fella there, I think you used to get on Grant. And uh, so they did. And they went once, there was a lot of like-minded parents and young people, I suppose, at that time, who decided that they would like to bring their children up speaking Irish. And they, uh, who were a wee bit older than my parents, they founded that the, the Shaws Road Gaeltacht, the urban Gaeltacht on the Shaws Road, and started uh, you know, to build the houses and they moved in. But after a while, they, they needed to sort of like close that circle. They had a, a community where they had Irish being spoken with their children in the house. They had activities outside, like clubs and you know trips and activities, um, you know social activities that you know Irish could be spoken at. But the, the closing the circle and what was needed was a school so that the students could be educated through the medium of Irish. <coughs> and that was uh, the, 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 the foundation of, of the Shaws Road, the first Irish medium primary school uh, in the north. And that was Bunskull Fuddle first, it founded in 1971. That's where I got my education. So I'm a product of the system. So I stand before you now today having had my education, my primary education through, through Irish. I went on to an, Irish, uh, an English uh, secondary school as there was no secondary school available at the time, and uh, went on to university, etc. I became a teacher, and then I decided that you know I wanted to get to know further afield, and I went off to Brazil for three years uh, to work uh, on on community development projects. I met my wife there, brought her back, and she's never forgiven me since. <laughs> so um, I live I live where I was brought up in the Shaws Road Gaeltacht. I uh, have three daughters. We speak Irish and Portuguese at home, and um, I suppose I do the commute to Dungiven for the last year. Uh, um, haven't taught before that for 14 years in College to First Year, which is the Irish medium post primary school uh, in Belfast. But some people might ask, you know, what are the benefits of bilingualism? Why do people <coughs> think that a bilingual education, um, you know, is, is beneficial for, for young people? We've read all the headlines at different times and at different places that, you know, Gale School students are ahead in English and maths. And I suppose, why? Why is it that people, not just in Ireland, but people in Canada, in New Zealand, uh, and in lots of different countries throughout the world, are opting for a bilingual education? And I suppose um, one of the reasons being is that there are cognitive benefits. So there are benefits of being bilingual, and I've got a five-minute clip here. I'm only going to show you a one-minute segment of it, and uh, and it's from one of the TED talks on bilingualism. And let's see if we can get this going. Being multilingual gives your brain some remarkable advantages. Some of these are even visible, such as higher density of the gray matter that contains most of your brain's neurons and synapses, and more activity in certain regions when engaging a second language. The heightened workout a bilingual brain receives throughout its life 
can also help delay the onset of diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia by as much as five years. The idea of major cognitive benefits to bilingualism may seem intuitive now, but it would have surprised earlier experts. Before the 1960s, bilingualism was considered a handicap that slowed a child's development by forcing them to spend too much energy distinguishing between languages, a view based largely on flawed studies. And while a more recent study did show that reaction times and errors increase for some bilingual students in cross-language tests, it also showed that the effort and attention needed to switch between languages triggered more activity in, and potentially strengthened, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. This is the part of the brain that plays a large role in executive function, problem solving, switching between tasks, and focusing while filtering out irrelevant information. So while bilingualism may not necessarily make you smarter, it does make your brain more healthy, complex, and actively engaged. And even if you didn't have the good fortune of learning a second language as a child, it's never too late to do yourself a favor and make the linguistic leap from hello to hola, bonjour, or ni hao's. Because when it comes to our brains, a little exercise can go a long way. So that's a clip. The rest of the clip is available on the TED website if you're interested in that. Uh, in, in, in watching that, but it does explain a little bit about why uh, pupils do so well in Irish medium schools and why pupils do so well in bilingual people, which is really most of the world's uh, population, uh, do so well or do a little bit better cognitively. And as, as the video clip said, Ernie, and it's never too late to start learning the second language, so <laughs> why who? Well done. And uh, <laughs> you're doing really well there. So um, I suppose, yes, there are cognitive scientific benefits to bilingualism, but does that explain the rise in Irish medium education? Maybe not. It's not the whole story. I like this quote from, uh, I suppose, a, a, a man from the area in which I now find myself working, uh, Seamus Heaney, uh, South Derry man. And he said, not to learn Irish is to miss the opportunity of understanding what life in this country has meant and could mean in a better future. It is to cut one, oneself off from ways of being at home. If we regard self-understanding, mutual understanding, imaginative enhancement, cultural diversity, and a tolerant political atmosphere as desirable attainments, we should remember that a knowledge of the Irish language is an essential element in their realization. So there's something a little bit you know, deeper about learning Irish in Ireland than it would be learning any other language, I suppose, or any other, you know, uh, the language, the indigenous language of the area. It gives you an idea about your culture, I suppose, the, the place names and that. We've, we've talked about that before, and I'm sure, I'm sure you've heard speakers in this room talking about the, the place names and the cultural value of the language. But there's certainly something in Irish medium education that resonates with that kind of a, a view that, you know, you know the, the focus on Irish gives you gives children an added view of themselves, gives them a better understanding about their identity. And I once heard someone say it, you look at your surroundings, uh, whether it be place names, your culture, your history, and you can see it in colour rather than in black and white. So it does add a lot more to, um, you know, to, to young people studying in Ireland, in Ireland uh, rather than just the scientific benefits of, of bilingualism. So, <clears throat> why Irish medium education? Immersion education and bilingualism. So the immersion aspect is really, really important. So when you think of immersion, diving in. And I suppose when I went to Brazil, I experienced that and I dived into Brazilian culture uh, in more ways than one, I'd say. <laughs> but certainly I came back fluent in the language and I learned the language really well. But I, I, I immersed myself in that culture and I was exposed to the language uh, all around me and I was able to pick that up very well and that's what we try to create in our schools. We try to create an immersion setting uh, where children who usually don't speak Irish at home okay, come into school and they become proficient and fluent in the language and are able to access the whole curriculum uh, by you know, their literacy skills being developed to a high standard through the immersion education setting. So sometimes people would say well, you know, you study Irish, you know, in, in your Irish class, or if you study two or three subjects through Irish, 
that's you know su that's sufficient or it might provide a service for for Irish speakers. But what you find is unless students, especially those who have English at home, don't have, you know unless they have that that support of the immersion setting, then they find it difficult to access the the, the, the literacy and the skills needed to access the full curriculum. So then you hear students saying, I think science is harder in Irish than it is in English. Well, it probably is if you haven't the support of the whole immersion set setting to develop your literacy skills in the language. We talk about academic excellence, and Irish schools are now uh, you know, coming into their own uh, insofar as you know, the, the levels of attainment are at the higher end of the scale. And we'll talk about that of, in a few moments. Cultural identity and understanding of self and tolerance of others, and that's coming with the, the Heaney quote that we heard earlier there. Uh, Irish medium schools are very much community schools, and they're a family, like a, you know, a family is very important, community is very important, and you'll find out that parents from Irish medium schools often know their teachers very well. They're not afraid to come to the school to, to, you know, to, to, to access uh, the, the professionals who are working in the school, and they feel as if they, in some ways, or, or they have ownership over that school because it's part of their community. We like to believe that in Irish medium schools we are creating young and confident adults. And I suppose at the heart of our schools are the relationships between the teachers and the students. In school, my name, the, the students call me Jermit, um, not Mr. O'Brider, and that's the same in most of the Irish medium schools across the way. And I find it takes a little bit of getting used to for the uninitiated, but certainly after um, you know having taught in grammar schools and different schools across the country, I would I would I, I value greatly that aspect of our schools because it gives a, a sense of uh, I suppose um, it, it imparts on our students that the person requires respect and dignity, not just the title, and we see that you know coming through our students that they respect the person and each person, and they in turn feel more confident to deal with, with uh, the people in positions of authority and people older than them as well. And I suppose employment opportunities, and maybe there were other speakers here talking about employment opportunities for uh, with people with, with the second language, and in particular uh, Irish. <coughs> to reap the full benefits of immersion education, really need it's a 15 year cycle. And the knee skull, uh, which is the nursery, side of, of things, the Bun School, the primary school, and the Gale Hollisha, or the Irish medium, post-primary school. And we're going to talk a little bit about that cycle in a moment or two. You referred earlier to uh, Bun School Fubble First Year. That was founded in 1971, and I suppose we could, look, we could uh, call that the winter of Irish medium education <laughs> in more ways than one. This is my school. Uh, this was the view from my back, uh, back, uh, the back bedroom of our house, and um, you know, as you can see, as, as you can see, it's probably an uninviting place for any children to study. Now we had a great time there, fond memories, and and we received an excellent education in spite of the surroundings. But as you can probably guess, not a very uh, conducive place for education in, in today's terms, and certainly no government funding was available for Irish medium schools until, I think, 1985. So all of my primary education was in prefabs as such, as Irish medium education was something that was beyond the pale and was not recognized by, by the government of the day. The same school today is a different, uh, is a different matter. Uh, there are over 300 pupils uh, attending the school. There was only six in my class. And they have a purpose-built building just up from where those prefabs were, and those are that's that's in my in my book very very good progress. And um, so, Bunskill Fuller First is approximately forty-five years old. I suppose so am I then. I would happy as well. But you know, it's it's forty-five years uh, since it was founded, and they they now have a a, a lovely building and um, provide education for uh, you know top class education. Their last inspection, which was in 2012, uh, was the school was rated as an outstanding school. And Irish medium schools have grown all across the north. Uh, we have 44 niece school in it, or, uh, nursery schools, uh, 35 uh, primary schools, bond school in it, 
and there are now two Irish medium, uh, you know, independent secondary schools. There are also three uh, units in secondary schools, in English medium secondary schools, that provide a certain percentage of the curriculum through the medium of Irish. Twenty years after the first Irish medium primary school was founded in Belfast, the first Irish medium uh, secondary school. I suppose there was a, a, a previous attempt, uh, but the one that we have today is College to First Year, and that was founded in September 1991. So 20 years after the first Irish medium primary school, we have this first Irish medium secondary school. And again, that was founded with no government support and no funding from central government from the Department of Education, and that, that lasted for six years uh, until they, they were recognised as a school. So Manskill First Year, it was called Manskill First Year uh, initially, and it changed the name to College to First Year in the, in the early 2000s. Uh, so that was the whole school in 1994. It had a blue uniform at that stage, and, uh, and their building was in the Culterland, in uh, the, the Culterland McAdam uh, on the Falls Road in Belfast. And as you can see, a small school, there would have been three year groups in that, in that photograph, uh, mm -hmm. and fast, quickly outgrowing the Culterland site. Now it is um, College to First are situated uh, further up the Falls Road at Beachmount, in, a, in Beachmount House or Chach Ardnava. Um, there's a bit of a site plan there uh, on the right of the screen. So the beige building at the front is the old house, which I think dates from the, the 1750s or 60s. And um, so that, that was a convent more recently, and then an old people's home, and they, the, the, the Irish language community acquired the building. It was a convent, as I said, so the, the chapel in College to First is a lovely library at the moment. Um, and there are prefabs, of course, out the back, and the, the green ones on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the diagram, and there's a new block as well, the sort of blue kind of on the left. And that, um, that school was built for 300 students, and there are now currently 630 students in, in College to First Year, and they're undergoing a £17 million uh, extension and revamp, including sports facilities in front of the school on the old Beachmount Leisure Centre site. So as you can see, uh, it's a far cry from the initial prefab that was built in 1971 to cater for the small number of pupils at Bunskill Football First Year. So in College to First Year, it's like any, uh, I suppose, mid-sized uh, post-primary school. You have 50 odd teachers, 13 assistants, 10 admin staff, 630 pupils, over about 700 people at the school. And that's tying into employment opportunities for the Irish medium sector. I suppose um, we did a study there quite recently on the number of students in P7 and the number of students in P1. And if the intake into P1 stays the same, okay, in seven years, the, because there are so many more uh, students in P1, the Irish medium sector will be 36% bigger than what it is at the moment. Okay, so it's a growth sector, and that means 36% more teachers, 36% more classroom assistants, 36% more accommodation, etc. So there is a growth uh, market there, I suppose, in educational terms. It's the sector that's, that's, that's growing and it's on the rise. I mentioned earlier about people who do, uh, um, some people say, well, how can you study Irish? How can you study maths through Irish or science through Irish? was just like any other subject. And when students come out of college to first year, quite a number who go on to study maths and science at university, including Soria, this fella here, who, who got a, an A star in his Irish and A star in his maths at A level, and he was a bit disappointed with the A in physics. <laughs> but he's, he's studying now his masters in, 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 in maths as well at, at Queen's. So college to first year today, and that's just the first years, and has over 630 pupils. But it's not just a North of Ireland phenomenon that we have in Irish medium education terms. It's an island-wide phenomenon. All over Ireland, we have uh, Irish medium schools being founded, I suppose, <coughs> year in and year out. And um, this, this is just, there are over 50 or 60 Irish medium post-primary schools uh, you know, in, in Ireland. And these are some of the ones that were formed or started in the last number of years. So I draw your attention to the last maybe 
three or four. Um, <coughs> College of Lorna Mara was founded in Balbriggan in 2014. They had 26 students, now they have 90 after three years. College of Fiercy and Raffarnham was founded at the same time. They have had 17 students starting off and now have grown to 80. Gail Hollis de Carrigaline and Gail Hollis de Gouda uh, were founded, my own school, Gail Hollis de Gouda, were founded uh, in September 2015, a year ago, and their population have, have increased as well. So we see that all over the country, all over the island, we have uh, Irish media <coughs> schools being founded. They're small, okay, they're small at the start, but they soon grow into medium sized schools. Um, and you know that they're able to cater for the full curriculum for the students who attend who attend those schools. <coughs> I mentioned earlier about the uh, <coughs> the academic success uh, of the of the schools, and you know in Gale College Chicago we have a partner school, uh, College of Argyll, which is an Irish medium school in Monaghan, and they're the top school um, in in Ulster. The top school uh, in 2014 was Limerick based Irish medium school. Um, you know, uh, Laurel Hill, and they they were again the top school in 2015. And you know, Irish medium schools, College of Owen was in 15. Uh, this number one was again in 2016. So the top schools. I don't really believe that league tables give an accurate description of, of how well or how poorly a school does, but it's used in the media and used across society to, to make judgments on judgments on schools. And by those judgments, as well as others, Irish medium schools are coming out at the top of the pile. So why we we'll have the cognitive boost that we've talked about? Motivation. You can, you're dealing very often with people who, who love the language, who want to see the language prosper, and who want to see the language being passed on to the next generation. And that you know, provides for motivated teachers. We we'll have a smaller pupil-teacher ratio. I mentioned before the quality of the relationships and the personal um, you know, knowledge that you have of students and knowing their strengths and their areas for improvement. So that brings me to my own school, Gale College de Gura. That was founded last year in 2015. Um, uh, we only had 16 students last year, but we believe that it's a school from the community and it's for the community as well. Um, the, it's, the community aspect of our school starts uh, at the top of the Board of Governors. So the four, there are five Irish medium primary schools in rural rural County Derry. Um, those are Balmas Green, Chirkena, which is just outside Maharala, Dungiven, Limawadi, and Maharafel. And each one of those uh, areas has representation on the Board of Governors of the school. And that ensures a link with the local Irish medium feeder primary schools and also the communities from where they come. After the school was founded, this was the interim Board of Governors. We had new governors coming in as well, each bringing a different aspect or a different skill set uh, to our school. For example, uh, Brian McKenna there was head of department in, in the Red O'Colorian Science and Technology. And that was something that we want to develop in Kiel College. He's brought a lot of skills to the table. Accommodation. We've been very, very lucky. Um, our school is situated in Dungiven Castle. And um, some people say, you know, um, you know, Carlsberg don't make schools like you know, but if they did, you know, it would be something like this. But um, you know, it has, uh, I suppose, some limitations in the size. It's not a very big castle. It looks big, but it's actually quite small. Uh, it was empty. <coughs> it was a hotel previously that was owned by a community regeneration organisation. And uh, when we needed accommodation, we approached them, and they were willing to uh, provide a lease. And as such, then new life has been brought into the castle. The castle was built um, maybe 200, 200 years ago, and uh, previous to that, um, there was a homestead uh, on the site by uh, of the old Cahan clan, and then you know Donald Balaho Cahan ended his days in, in, in the Tower of London, I believe. But um, Irish has been spoken on the Ocahan homestead uh, once again, and um, you know we're there for the moment. I think we'll outgrow the castle, but we have plans to build um, alongside it uh, to make sure that we have our specialist <coughs> classrooms uh, for science and technology. And those are approved and are waiting completion. I suppose this is the this is the castle here, the long building. 
So there's a bit of land beside it. Anybody who knows Dungiven will know that that was the site of the dance hall, uh, uh, which burnt down about 20 years ago. And uh, so there was um, many a raucous Saturday night uh, on that site, but uh, it's a different kind of uh, uh, energy that's floating about the, the castle grounds these days with the kids uh, out playing uh, at break time, etc. We have a uh, well experienced staff uh, in Gale College Group, myself. We have between part time and full time teachers, we have five teachers, and we have a, a, a development officer who's responsible for you know, a lot of the admin um, that deals with the school. Some people say, how, how can you provide um, the full <coughs> curriculum at Key Stage 3 with only a few teachers? But you know, most of the teachers in Gale Hollis you got a, last year there were fewer teachers. Each teacher was teaching five subjects. Um, you, you'll find that at Key Stage 3, at first, second and third year, that is possible with supports. Um, as the school grows, we're employing more, more uh, specialist teachers. So for example, this year, um, Barra O'Doherty joined the staff, who's a, who's a science teacher, he's a science specialist with 20 years experience teaching in different schools, including 12 years in college to first year. So, um, you know, as the years go by, we employ the specialist, so the specialist teachers who, who'll, who we need to take the, the students up as far as GCSE and A level. The transition program, <coughs> moving from primary to secondary school, is really important and it's key to success at Key Stage 3. So we'll meet with, you know, the rang the shop, the P7 teachers, and um, we'll have projects running with the primary schools around literacy and numeracy, so that they know how we're teaching maths and we know how they're teaching maths, and we, we've got some joint approaches to the teaching of literacy and numeracy. And um, we'll have assessments, baseline assessments day, and we have you know students up to to the school you know a number of times before they actually join the school as well. Because of the size, we have teachers mentoring small groups of pupils as well. College to first year. This is Emer Fikanali. Emer is another past pupil of Bun School Fuggle First Year, and she's the the coordinator of the Learning Support Centre in College to First Year, which is um, you know provides uh, advice and and uh, guidance for ourselves and for the Irish medium sector um, to work with uh, children who have specific learning difficulties. And we've, we've had a very strong link with College to First Year uh, where we tap into their departments and their expertise, uh, especially in areas where maybe we don't have a specialist as yet. Homework is a major issue for uh, parents. If you speak to Irish parents in Irish medium schools or parents who are thinking of sending their children to Irish medium schools, the first thing they'll say is, oh, how am I going to help my child do their homework because I don't speak any Irish myself. And you know, we have a lot of, put a lot of thought, a lot of effort into making sure that parents feel supported and helping out with their homework. So we have a very um, highly developed uh, homework strategy. Pupil voice, these are three of our students. Uh, they were due to come with me today, but they weren't able to. Okay, so um, it's a little bit logistically a wee bit, diffi wee bit difficult. But uh, we've preferred, prepared a short video, and uh, I'll let you have a wee look at that now. <laughs> Oh, 
Hannig and Chelsea will show that the Kiel got a hint of the gas there. Um, very much Cad, Dunmolly Farber, Hannig and Nolig. Instant for a new cash and do give them. So her kid allowed to be known for the blame the shop. A new lecture has the match. If he trusts Gun Fogus and Shawnee, more Boston if he's the match. Begging to win, let's talk really good team and show me the way we're doing. Show me around them, show me stories, show me foreign news. Sniakta, so I can't beg. 
Og så kører vi til sådan noget. Og færdig er Patricia, Sersa og Svend. Vi lader her til atmosfære, ko special til sådan ko jazz, sådan alles an kader sådan ko later ederne, teshmhorit, en skull. Og hvis du nu din ikke nok vil tjekke sig skål, kan du se mig din i tag op og læse en af ord gårdene i anden af kåberi, og hvis du ser en sådan af den ved kåberi, og hvis du ser det for at mene, og hvis du ikke ser det her kå, så nu tager jeg det. Nu har jeg ikke nødt til at dine jer, jeg var en lille smås i skål. Ti a hi bon, an ti mai mar ve a ni smu dalti ogin, ages erm ti ok mohin she mar just ku brushi she an sort of bond talking mar ni ni ve an attention ogin ni smu ma hardi an chen. Yep. You're right on this and that thing. BBC documentary that's going to be made about Gail Holishigura over the next year or so. It started last year and it's going to continue on. So you'll have to wait to see if Erin uh, got on well. And I think part of the reason why she didn't want all the rest of the crowd coming in this year is because her wee sister was coming, but we'll uh, reserve judgment on that one. <coughs> but uh, we're nearly, nearly, nearly finished. Um, I suppose we, we went through the whole process. Kiva was asking me earlier, who picked this skirt, you know? Because it is fairly radical. Like, you know, it's either you love it or you hate it. But I think it does give a bold statement anyway. The Board of Governors picked the uniform. They wanted to make uh, that, that kind of a bold statement as well. <coughs> because we're in the castle, we use the local sport pavilion for PE. We go across to St. Patrick's College, Dungiven, uh, for our science and our home economics. Um, and, you know, we last year, we went across to the local Irish medium primary school for school dinners. So we, we, all, was, all of that was within walking distance from the school. So, so we, were, we were able to cater for it this year. This year we have technology in-house and we have the dinners in our own castle as well. We have a, you know, a, lot, of, a lot of different activities, but one of the big deals about our school is that uh, we're ruled by the bus, ruled by transport. So students come from as far away as Port Glenone in County Antrim and Strabane and County Tyrone uh, to attend the Irish Medium School in, uh, in Dunkevin. Um, as I said before, we provide the full curriculum at Key Stage 3. All of the subjects uh, are, are taught through the medium of Irish. Uh, we're teachers, last year we're teaching five subjects each. They're now down to three subjects each. Key Stage 3, next year it'll be less and less as the school goes on and teachers are employed who have specialist subjects. We rely very much on ICT and we've developed an online learning facility that students can access from home just like any other uh, uh, school. And we have a lot of all the, school, the students have access to the uh, iPads and, and, and tablet uh, technology as well. People ask us what about, <coughs> what about when you're doing GCSEs and A-levels? But one of the decisions taken by our Board of Governors is that you know, we're going to be a, a very strong and, and, and you know, take part in the Roe Valley Learning Community. That's a very strong learning community. I think it's the longest established learning community in the North, which is a group of six schools and uh, the, the Northwest College of Further Education. And they work together in providing the entire work framework. That's all the subjects at GCSE and their level. And uh, our students will, will buy into that as well and have access to those subjects. Um, Gale College of is a multi-faith school. So it's not a non-denominational school or a particular denomination, but we hope to cater for all of the spiritual needs 
and, and I suppose requirements of, of, of children in our society today, those who have um, particular faiths and those who have none. And you know, we look forward to the day where we have people of all sorts of different faiths uh, attending Gael College and <coughs> and certainly um, we'll be, we'll be uh, working with, I uh, suppose, one of the, 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 the more recent collaborations we had was with the Reverend David Latimer uh, in the Amazing Space Programme, where we had 3,500 uh, students from across the north uh, in the Maze site at the Econ Centre um, celebrating, I uh, suppose, World Peace Day. And uh, Gail Hollis Chikura um, sang uh, a song in Irish for, for, that, for that group as well. Lots of extracurricular activities all through the medium of Irish. So we have very strong links with Glore Dungevin, Glore um, Marafilta, Glore Nisperani, and Dunkarn, which are Irish language groups in, this, in, in, in the community. And they work very closely with us. They have after school clubs and uh, activities for, for the young people who attend the school. And that's something that we will like to see growing and developing over time. Music is a very central part. Uh, all of, <coughs> a lot of the children you saw Aaron in the, in the clip there um, are very musical. They enjoy music, and everyone is in the choir, whether they like it or not. <laughs> so, <laughs> and and uh, I suppose as time goes on, uh, there be people will be opted in and out of that. But at the moment, we've opted for an inclusive uh, experience. <laughs> um, uh, I suppose some of the boys maybe aren't as keen. Um, Everything is taught through Irish except for, of course, uh, English. And, you know, English, you know, we want our students to be proficient and fluent in Irish, but also in English. And we have different um, ways of ensuring, because teaching English in Gael College to is probably different from, than teaching English in any other secondary school, uh, apart from College to First in the North, where, you know, the cross, cross I suppose, cross-departmental work, um, you know, the themes, except they're all in Irish. Uh, so we have to be imaginative in the ways that English is developed and you know that our, our students have access and exposure to uh, different experiences in the English language. And you know we've looked at uh, some of the short blocks in drama or in art being provided through English as well, working on, a, on an English play, for example, to make sure our students also have proficiency in English. So Irish medium, uh, we're just coming to a close. Irish medium education in the north, um, you know, this is this is the growth in the sector. Um, this is the first school in 1971 um, of a small group of children attending the Irish medium school on the Shaw's Road, and this is a photograph on the right in 2011. Hi. Uh, see, I'm I'm, I'm uh, I suppose privileged to say that I'm in both of these photographs. <laughs> So, uh, big fella here at the back with a bowl haircut. Right? Did you used to put a bowl on? <laughs> and uh, and see a few more. And then we are, we're down here on the day that Mary McAleese opened up the uh, learning support centre in College of First and celebrated, um, you know, uh, forty years of Irish medium education in the north. And alongside the staff and the dignitaries here who are visiting, we'll have the group of parents. Some of them here today. Some of them listening in over the internet. Uh, who started the whole thing going <coughs> 45 odd years ago. In, in County Derry, we'll have a similar story. Uh, you heard Niall O'Cahan, and I believe Niall will be giving a talk here next week. Okay, so he'll probably, in two weeks, two, weeks two weeks' time, and he'll probably give the perspective of the community and the revival of the Irish language in the community. But certainly, Niall was involved in setting up the first Irish medium uh, primary school in uh, County Derry, which was Founded, I think, I think it was 1993, somewhere along then. But this was the picture in 1994 with two classes, P1 and P2. And then we have the, the photograph last year of the opening of Gail Hollis Jugura. So it just shows you the possibilities, you know, from that small group. You know, we had, on the day in college first, we had this crowd up. We had 15 students from every Irish medium primary school in the north. And uh, so we couldn't have, couldn't have got them all up. But certainly, it shows you the potential in the sector. And then we have Gail Hollis you got it today uh, with our 48 students from last year. So we're the only school that tripled in size in one year. <laughs> and uh, well, there are specific reasons for that, of course. 
and significantly on the right there, the eight students who are traveling in from Derry City to attend Gale College Theatre, which was something that um, probably may not have foreseen uh, in that the hunger for Irish medium education, you know, is two things from, I, I've learned about Dungiven, he says, local people have told me it's the first time in 30 odd years that people are coming up the Glenshian Pass to go to school <laughs> uh, since the days of St. Columns when everybody tripped up to St. Columns and then it's the first time in a long time that people are coming out from Derry City to go to school in, in say, like, uh, the countryside or a rural town. So um, hopefully the, you, you know, over time we'll see that the school grows and develops. So Shana will, that's all I have time for. So uh, I've got to meet a mind There's only questions, I'm happy to